What's up guys, Mickle here, and Bitcoin maxis are completely out of control. Guys, in this video, I want to go over something wild that happened earlier today, where in a Twitter space event, a bunch of Bitcoin maxis tried to pin the FTX situation on Brad Garlinghouse and BitBoy Crypto. Guys, in this video, I want to show you how bad Bitcoin maximalists are for the cryptocurrency industry, and why they are so scared of everything Ripple and XRP. I also want to go over some pretty wild evidence that I just came across that shows that the SEC has very clearly never had the jurisdiction to go after cryptocurrency since day one. Guys, the SEC and Gary Gensler says the rules are clear and they should dominate the cryptocurrency industry, but it looks like their own statute says they shouldn't. Last of all, guys, at the end of the video, I want to show you something pretty wild that's going to happen in the next couple days. It has to do with Ripple Swell. Guys, there are some people speaking at that event, and you are definitely going to want to see who they are. Like always, guys, your support means so much to this channel. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below and turn on bell notifications. These three simple things are going to go such a long way in helping this channel grow, and it really does mean so much to me. If you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out the link for Uphold down in the description below. Uphold is my favorite exchange and a great place to buy and sell XRP. With that said though guys, let's jump right into the video and I hope you guys enjoy the content. Real quick guys, you do not want to miss out on the insane promotion Moomoo is running right now. If you sign up with Moomoo right now using the link in the description of this video, you could win up to 15 free stocks and your chance of winning a share of Tesla is actually doubled right now. You will also get $10 put directly into your account by Moomoo. And guys, Moomoo has some great features. They have advanced charting tools, a great way to visualize companies' financials, and even real-time level 2 market data. So guys, do not miss out on this promotion. Go get your free stocks, go get your $10, and sign up with Moomoo now using the link in the description of this video. So guys, let's jump into it, and I want to start this video off by going over something pretty ridiculous that happened earlier today. So there was a pretty massive Twitter space going on this morning with a bunch of high-profile people in the cryptocurrency industry, and essentially they were talking about the massive blow-up involved with FTX. They were essentially all just giving their opinions on what went on, talking about what they knew, and out of nowhere, Brad Garlinghouse joined. So obviously, I was pretty excited when I saw Brad Garlinghouse join. All these different people in the cryptocurrency industry warned us forever about how sketchy Ripple is, how sketchy XRP is, yet as time has gone on, none of these claims have ever come true. So I already knew instantly that as soon as Brad Garlinghouse joined, these people were going to throw some serious shade at him, and guys, that is exactly what we got. Instantly, Brad Garlinghouse got on the mic to talk about the FTX situation, and they just started grilling him with the most ridiculous questions. It was stuff like, hey Brad, do you think it's a massive problem that Ripple holds a lot of XRP? Hey Brad, do you think you holding a lot of XRP makes XRP a security? Guys, the questions were absolutely ridiculous, and this Twitter space was focused on the FTX blowup. Brad Garlinghouse did an absolutely incredible job of countering their claims. He essentially just said, look, we're one of the only crypto companies in this entire industry providing actual transparency. We're not forced to give out our XRP market reports. We do it because we know it's the right thing to do. And it's completely absurd that we get all this crap for being transparent and doing the things that you guys are saying should be done in this industry, all while you let people like Joe Lubin have a free pass and hide the amount of Ethereum that Consensus has. What this shows, guys, is these people, these high-profile influencers in the cryptocurrency community, they act like they don't have an agenda, but they do. They are willing to slander Ripple at all costs, and it just comes down to the fact that they are so afraid of everything Ripple and XRP. These people know how powerful Ripple and XRP are. They know that XRP is going to be a critical solution to our financial system. Guys, these people cannot stand the fact that XRP is achieving all these things, things that Bitcoin is likely incapable of doing. Bitcoin's tech cannot do the things that XRP is going to be able to do for our financial system, and that's why these people have to make up so much FUD. These people were having a Twitter space talking about how important transparency and disclosure are, and then immediately go attack Brad Garlinghouse for doing that exact same thing. These people are complete hypocrites, they cannot be trusted, and if you see anyone bringing up pointless FUD against Ripple, guys, you need to question everything these people are talking about, because it just shows they are not looking out for you, all they care about is pumping their own bags. Now guys, I want to point out one other thing in relation to this also, and I think this is kind of important. 
BitBoy Crypto is also on this live stream, essentially reporting all the stuff he has found with FTX. And guys, he has found some seriously important stuff having to do with FTX. But the second BitBoy started talking about the things he found, the Bitcoin Maxi started talking about some coins he pumped like three years ago. I just want to point this out because after listening to BitBoy Crypto on this interview, he was extremely professional. He was really just destroying their arguments. And he essentially said, yeah, I promoted these tokens because I actually she thought they were good. I was naive. I made a mistake, but now I'm moving on. I don't do any promotions anymore. And the main reason I really break this up is because it's just so funny that they had this Twitter space brought BitBoy Crypto on to talk about the things he found having to do with FTX and then immediately go after his reputation and try to make the things he's bringing to the table not as credible. It shows how dumb these people are. They will do anything just to try to push their own narrative. And these Bitcoin maxis really Really do need to be avoided at all costs. Because I want to move on and talk about something almost just as absurd, and that is the fact that the SEC actually has given FTX an ESG rating, and in the category for leadership and governance, they got a 50, which is a higher score than Exxon. Now, what you guys need to understand, this doesn't have to do with anything on the environmental aspect. So the SEC looked at FTX's leadership, they looked at Exxon's leadership, and said FTX has a better leadership program at their company. Because FTX was a Ponzi scheme, and Exxon is one of the most well-respected oil companies in the entire world. It just shows that the SEC has absolutely no idea what's going on at their agency. They will say absolutely anything for money, and it has nothing to do with protecting you. And if you guys are wondering why we haven't gotten an investigation into any of this yet, I don't know either. Different R's like Warren Davidson have been constantly saying that they need a House majority in order to really look into Gary Gensler. From what I understand, it would help. They don't need it. And I just don't understand this idea that in order for us to have justice, we need a certain political party to have power. Guys, that should not be the way it works. We should have justice because it's the right thing to do. And I just hate the idea that we need to vote a certain way in order for us to hold different people in our government accountable. They should be held accountable no matter what, and I understand that might not be realistic based on where we are in society today. That's just not the way it works, but it is disgusting. This shouldn't be the way it works. Luckily for us, it does look like ours are going to gain the house, so guys, they better actually get something done in relation to this, because if this is all talk and they're not actually going to investigate Gary Gensler or go after and investigate any of these things like the FTX situation, well guys, that would be a complete embarrassment and they would lose so much trust on this front. Because now I want to move on and talk about something very interesting in terms of what the SEC actually has control over. If you listen to the SEC and Gary Gensler talk about their jurisdictions, well, it sounds like they have jurisdiction over absolutely everything. Gary Gensler always says, oh, well, Congress painted with a broad brush and therefore the SEC really could have control of any given market. Guys, if you take a look at what the actual rules are, what does the SEC actually have control over? It gets very interesting, and the only thing that looks like it's actually clear is that the SEC might not even come close to having jurisdiction over cryptocurrencies. Take a look at this. In 1958, the SEC filed an interpretive release regarding tickets, tokens, certificates, and stamps stating that Congress did not intend to include such items in the scope of their statute. So guys, right here, the SEC is literally admitting that they do not have the right to regulate tickets, tokens, and certificates, but the SEC is claiming it is clear and obvious they should have the jurisdiction to regulate digital tokens. So according to the SEC here, they claim they know perfectly well that they are not allowed to regulate physical tokens, but then when it comes to digital tokens, suddenly it's clear that they have full authority. Guys, it is completely absurd. It shows that the SEC doesn't even really understand where they stand in their argument. And all this bluffing, all this stuff about Gary Gensler saying it's clear we have control over crypto. Guys, it is not true at all. Gary Gensler is just trying to will it into existence. But one of the senators actually pointed out during a hearing, if Gary Gensler actually thought he had control over the cryptocurrency industry, he would have done a lot more by now. And it just shows while he may talk a big game, he really hasn't been delivering on that front, and I think even Gary Gensler knows that his jurisdiction does not cover the cryptocurrency market. 
But guys, I want to finish this video off and just show you this because this is pretty exciting. We are coming up to Ripple Swell. It's always a very exciting time of the year. It's happening November 16th through November 17th. And at this event, we are going to have speakers from MasterCard, Bank of America, and Amazon Web Services. Guys, so many people speculate, do these big companies know about crypto? Guys, of course they do. They are waiting for regulations. I really hope we get a really cool announcement here. I have a feeling we won't just because of this case. I have a feeling we have to wait for all the massive announcements to happen after the case ends. But either way, still super exciting to see this going on and seeing who's speaking at this thing. It shows that all these companies are going to be working with Ripple at one day in the future using XRP to move money all around the world. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out. Woo!